Hello, it's Alex here. Thank you very much for coming by my channel um, again. It's still early days for me, so um, it's really appreciated everybody that's um, subscribed and uh, clicked the notification bell. Um, it's all still meaning an awful lot. But um, yeah, I thought I would give you a bit of an update uh, with regard to what I've been up to recently. Um, if you watched my last vlog, you'll see that um, I'd just had uh, three deliveries of fabric and I've been quite good. I've used most of it. I've made um, a skirt that I'm really not sure about. So I'll show that to you in a minute and I would really appreciate any um, feedback on that. Um, and I also got a bit of a stash buster um, with the sweater knit fabric that I got. So um, I'm also keen to see what people think of that. But the other thing, the main thing that I've been sewing recently is unsurprisingly another coat. And this time it's the Riga coat and it's from a French independent um, sewing pattern company. And I'm sure the correct way to pronounce this is um, really not orange juice, but in my head, I always call them orange juice. I didn't learn French at school. I'm half German so I'd learned German but this is it um, and I bought this pattern uh, I think last winter it was all cut out and ready to go I kind of hadn't really thought this through but in some ways it's a bit of a, um, a next step on from the Parker coat that I made that was in my last vlog because it has an awful lot of similarities um, yet again it doesn't have a um, collar with a collar stand it doesn't have a set in sleeve it doesn't have any fastenings it's um, done up by a belt um, so to some extent it's a pretty easy pattern um, but it does it is lined and it does have one or two extra bits to it so it's a kind of next stage on um, and I made it this time using some fabric that I'd seen from Stone Fabrics. They had posted a picture on Instagram of this and I knew I had to buy it straight away. Um, sorry, I really understand now why people are always drinking tea on um, YouTube because you get so thirsty. Um, so excuse me. Mm. So yeah, I've seen this fabric stone fabrics you have to ring them to order the fabric um rather than just being able to um you know click a button on the website so that felt a bit retro uh, but it was easy and it came pretty quickly and it's this um it's a leopard well it's not actually a print because it's um the leopard design is kind of tufted but it's on a charcoal gray background and yeah it's about, I think it was 45% wool and the rest I think is polyester. Um, so it should be reasonably warm. And I lined it with this, which is pretty marvellous, um, Cupro. I'm fairly sure it's Cupro anyway. Um, I bought this fabric from Fabworks last winter and I am fairly sure I bought it because it was Cupro. I, cannot stand that awful acetate fabric that you get in lining in most uh, ready-to-wear things certainly on the high street and if you go to your local fabric shop and say you're lining something that's what they're going to send you towards and whilst it's cheap as chips it's also uh, pretty horrible to wear it gets uh, smelly and um it makes an awful noise and it's kind of rustly. I, I just, I just, you know, one of the things about being able to sew is you can have things made of whatever you like. Um, but it's lovely. It has that sort of washed silk kind of feel to it. So it feels pretty special to have that because um, obviously this side round is, it's great that way. And of course, when you sew with it, uh, it has got a nap. So you do need to make sure You've got your nap running the right way i prefer it to be down because that way up is kind of a bit bristly uh that way down is fab um and i really like the um instructions that you get from this pattern company that i can't pronounce 
um, which do come in English as well as obviously French. There's a few, a uh, couple of extra little things that I quite liked about it, and one of them was on the pockets. So it has um, patch pockets. Um, I probably can't see that. Anyway, it does have a patch pocket. And what you do with this is that you line it, um, obviously with your lining fabric, and that's great because it means that the outside seams of your pocket are all turned in nicely and then you don't have to worry so much about getting the angles right and making sure that the, I mean, you still do need to make sure that the shape is the same on both pockets and that they're exactly the same size, but it comes out a lot easier. Um, and also it does mean, so that if you can see, that's the inside of the pocket. So you've got the lift there of the um, coat fabric. But it also means, what I like about it as well, is that when you put your hand in the pocket, um, I mean, in this case, I'm feeling lovely Q-Pro lining, um, but you've not got, you know, a bit of seam allowance flapping around. So I really like that, and I'm actually gonna steal that. All future pockets are going to be lined, and I'm gonna do them exactly like that. So I really like that. Um, I like the details on this coat. It, so it's done up with a belt. Um, I I think on the pattern it had the wrong side of the belt in the lining fabric but I wasn't so keen on that so I did both sides and I think it was supposed to just be a belt that you tie but I bought one of these um, belt clasp thingies um, just to make that a bit easier. Um, I know I keep making things in leopard print and it is actually relatively new to me. I think it's because um, Whilst I do like prints, I'm not the most girly of people, so there are some florals I like, but an awful lot are just not for me. And um, yeah, animal prints kind of, yeah, seem to fit, I uh, seem to be drawn to them. Um, I'll probably get sick of it because I've made quite a few recently and on the other things I'm about to show you as well. Uh, but yeah, I really like this coat. It feels a bit... Um, like a sort of going out coat rather than your everyday, you know, schlep around. But I'm determined to wear it every day to schlep around. Um, I don't want to just keep it for best because when is best? I mean, in my life, not very often. Um, so yeah, that's my coat and I am really very happy with that. So the fabric deliveries that I had last week, um, one of them was some faux Angora. And if you saw that last vlog, you'll see that I was actually making a jumper with faux angora for Minerva Crafts, which was uh, gifted to me um, as part of the Minerva Crafts blogging team or whatever they call it. Um, and I really liked that fabric and um, I've worn that a couple of times. I'll put a picture somewhere. Um, I've worn it a couple of times and although it doesn't have any natural fibres in it at all. It actually feels really nice to wear and lovely and snuggly, even though it's quite an open weave. So um, having, while I was working with that fabric, I was, you know, thinking how nice it was. And um, I then saw a post from a lady who's called Casey, and she has a fabric shop called TFG Fabrics. And she had got some faux angora but it looked like it was much more of a denser knit rather than that open weave, um, like the one from Minerva. So that's what I ordered. And this that I am wearing is the black, which I guess we cannot deny is probably more of a charcoal gray than a black. Um, and I wanted to investigate making some more sweaters this year because, I mean, it's winter, it's autumn winter, Obviously, it's what we're all wearing an awful lot of. And um, I have quite a few merino wool jumpers in a number of different colours. And I would love to make something out of merino. But we can't get it here in the UK. Um, so I kind of wanted to find a sweater knit that I could use, but also would feel nice to wear. Because there is nothing worse than a an acrylic jumper it's that horrible combination of slightly sweaty and cold all at the same time it's I don't like that um, and I have had some sweat in it before that gives exactly that kind of a feel 
So, um, yeah, I had high hopes for this faux angora. And I have to say, this is probably now the third time I'm wearing this jumper. And I can tell you now, it does not give you that nasty sort of man-made fibre feel at all. So I'm really, really pleased with it. So this is the, I'll put a picture somewhere. This is the Jarrah uh, jumper from Neg Negan, Megan Nielsen. Uh, I've made a few linden sweatshirts and um, I like my linden. I lost a little bit of weight since I made the last one. So the ones I've got are a bit, they were oversized originally uh, to begin with. So they're really oversized now. Um, and I'm not that keen on the neckline on the linden and I know lots of other people have said the same. In fact, I, I know people that have said they, they literally, it was unusable because the neck is so wide in comparison to the rest of the jumper. And when I made mine, I knew that. So I actually followed the neckline for a size, well, two or three sizes smaller, I think. And it, it's okay. But I just thought it'd be interesting to try something else. The other thing with the linden is it has raglan sleeves and the jara has a dropped sleeve so it's still easy and it's still not set in um and you don't have to worry about fit as much uh but obviously it gives a different shape than a raglan and i was yeah i was interested to try it out and i'm really pleased with it um the pattern comes with quite a few different options and of course the tie version that's quite popular um and i think it's quite a versatile pattern because of course in the summer months you could just turn it into t-shirts and I will make some probably out of um, French terry or fleece back sweatshirting that kind of thing. I went for um, the option with the band at the bottom but I just used I didn't use ribbing um, I just used the um, same fabric throughout and I found it to be really easy and yeah I really like the, the jumper I could I could maybe size down, but I quite like jumpers to be to be quite roomy. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with it. But I particularly, particularly really love this fabric. So I'm really glad I've got some in blue because I think it's sold out now. And uh, she also has recently, and unfortunately it finished yesterday, she's also had some, some pre-orders in for the same Angora fabric in some other colours. But I think what normally happens is when that comes into her, whatever's left will go on her website. So it's worth keeping a look, look out for it. I really like it. Once I'd made the Jarrah jumper, I had some fabric left and um, I fancied making a pair of fingerless gloves for quite a while. So I thought I'd got enough to do that. And I had a little um, look to see if there were any free um, sewing patterns for gloves. And whilst I found loads for gloves and I found loads of knitting patterns uh, for fingerless gloves, I couldn't find anything for sewing. So I ended up drafting something myself and I'm really pleased with them. I know I'm going to get lots of wear out of them. And I think it's quite good to have a stash busting uh, project for jersey and for sweater knits because, um, you know, sometimes there's not an awful lot you can do with, well, certainly with sweater knit scraps. And this didn't take very much at all. So. Yeah, I'm really pleased with it. If anybody's interested, I could always put a, a downloadable uh, link on my blog. So yeah, please comment below. Let me know if you're interested in that. And lastly, before I head off, I'm going to show you this skirt that I made um, that I'm not really that convinced about. It is Simplicity 8656. It's a jersey skirt and I have made it in this fabric from Material Girl Laura which is, um, we won't mention what print it is, uh, but it's a blue gray color and it's got a slightly glittery gold um, print on it. I love this fabric. and I've been looking for an excuse to buy it for a while. So the fabric's not the issue. I just can't help but feel that the flounce on the side just looks a bit old fashioned. I was hoping it would have a bit of a contemporary look and it would have a bit of a twist but actually I think it's it's quite the opposite and it's a bit woman at Marks and Spencer's and um, yeah I'm just not ready for that yet uh, so I'm not sure whether I should a am I just going mad and it looks perfectly fine 
Uh, B, should I just whoop off, whoop off, whip off the frilly bit on the side, the cascading bit, and just make it into a straight skirt? I've got, no, I took a picture trying to see what that would look like. Um, or whether I just abandon it altogether and repurpose the fabric and make something else with it because I don't want it to go to waste. I really like this fabric, but I just feel this look is a bit dated and yeah, I've got a horrible feeling it would just sit in my wardrobe sort of being overlooked and, and not being used for anything. So if anyone's got any ideas, I would really appreciate it. Um, and then that's me done for this time. I've got some um, lovely faux suede fabric from Lady McElroy that's just come in this week from Minerva. So for my next um, make for them, I'm gonna be doing something with that in the next little while. And I've got yet another coat that I'm making. Uh, this time it's one for dog walking. And that's gonna have a few challenges. So I'm looking forward to doing that and I will be back soon. Thank you very much for watching. Please hit that notification bell and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And if you have, well, thank you very much. All right, see you soon, bye.